Hello, I'm Kath. Welcome back to my channel where I love to talk about all things sewing related, sometimes with a bit of knitting and crochet sprinkled in too. So today's video is a bit of a sewing catch up. So I've got a few different things to share that I've been up to over the last week or two. I've got a new project I finished this week that I wanted to talk about. I've also got a bit of crochet to share too, but I'll make sure to put that at the end of the video and a couple of other bits as well. So a bit of a mix in this video as ever. But I'll start off as usual with what I'm wearing for my handmade wardrobe. And stay here in the south of England. It's a bit of an overcast day. The sun is trying to break through. It's still quite mild weather. And this morning I had a pop of rummage um, in my drawers and I pulled out this top that I haven't worn for absolutely ages. It needed a bit of an iron because it was a little bit um, crinkled from having been right at the back of the drawer, but I ironed it this morning, popped it on, and I'm actually really enjoying wearing it, having not had it out for so long. There's a top I made quite a long time ago using a pattern I haven't revisited for a few years now, I guess, but it's a really nice pattern. It is this one here. It is the Scout Tea Pattern by Grainline Studio. What I like about this pattern is it's quite a simple t-shirt pattern mm. for woven fabrics. And I think with it being made in a woven fabric, it makes it feel a little bit more dressy when you put it on than a jersey t-shirt. But yeah, this is a line drawing. It's quite a simple little t-shirt pattern yeah, for woven fabrics. It's got this scoop neck and cap sleeves. And then it's a little bit fitted around the bust. And then it goes out into a little bit more of a gentle, relaxed fit as you go down to the waist and hips area. But it's not super fitted at the bust still. It's just a t-shirt that even though it's made in non-stretch fabrics, you can pull on over your head. And it's got a good size range on this one too. Um, I've got the paper pattern, which comes in the US 0 to 18. But if you go on the Grain Line Studio website, there is also a PDF version that is available in the US 14 up to 32. And I think the main difference with that version is that it's got bust darts. This one's just got a straight fit at the front with no darts, but the 14 to 32 version has bust darts, add a little bit more shaping there. But this t-shirt sews up really nicely. The neckline is finished with bias binding, which you'll probably know if you've watched my previous videos, so it's a finish I really like. I think actually when I made my first scout tee, it was one of the first times I tried using bias binding around the neckline, and I found it a little bit fiddly for my first go, but um, I've got a bit more used to doing it now. But yeah, it's a really nice pattern. I think it's great for showcasing a pretty viscose print. I think it works really well in a lovely drapey fabric. And I also find it to be quite a good scrap buster because there's only really four pieces you'd cut out, the front and the back and the two sleeves. And the sleeve pattern pieces are quite small because it's just a little cap sleeve and then a bit of bias binding. So I've made two versions, I think, of this pattern. Um, and the other version that I'm not wearing today is one that I made out of scraps left over from a different project. Which is quite satisfying to use those scraps and turn them up into a cute t-shirt. But the version I'm wearing today is my first scout tee I made. And I made it in this lovely... Um, viscose fabric is a very old Atelier Brunette viscose fabric. I think it was called Tabby or something like that. Um, so it's got quite a sort of um, creamy or off-white coloured base to it. And it's got these cute little, I don't know what they are, these little, um, this print on in this like a deep red colour and a sort of teal and a sort of ochre. Yeah, different colours on there. I thought it was quite a cute print. And I think it's, as you can see, it's a little bit, sheer but it works quite well for a t-shirt and it's lovely and light to wear and I just find the scout tee has quite a nice fit to it where the shoulder seams sit they seem to sit quite nicely on my shoulders it doesn't feel too tight around there it's just quite loose and relaxed I think I made the size zero which is designed for bust 32 waist 25 hips 35 and I went on my bust measurements my waist and hips would put me one size up at a size two but I thought going on the pattern description that it's got more relaxed fit below the bust, I could probably size down one size there without having to grade out and I find the fit to be quite nice. I'll stand up it so you can see. It's quite nice and loose and relaxed and really comfy to wear. So wearing my version today makes me think I really should revisit this pattern because it's a really nice simple one. And I find that Grain Line Studio instructions are really clear um, and take you through the process with really nice simple um, yeah, the instructions, they don't have a lot of words in the instructions, but the words are very clear and easy to follow, if that makes sense. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I've just got it on with a pair of um, Chino style pants that I bought years and years ago from Gap that I really love. I really should look into finding a pattern 
um, that are similar to this so I could replicate these because at some point they're going to fall apart these trousers because I love wearing them they're my sort of favorite pair of summery crop trousers so and I'm sure it'd be possible to yeah make them I just need to look into finding a pattern and making trousers isn't necessarily my favorite um, but yeah I should really look into that so yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Oh, and in case you're wondering, and the way you get the scouts on is just by pulling on over your head. So it's nice and simple, just like a jersey t-shirt. I guess the scoop neck is wide enough that it goes over quite comfortably and the whole fit is not too fitted. So it does slip on nicely. So there are no zips or fastenings or ties at the back or anything. So it really is a nice, simple, basic t-shirt and quite a nice, simple sofa woven pattern. And I think it's great for showcasing a pretty print as well. Say if you've got quite a small piece of fabric in your stash, like a viscose or a cotton lawn or some other sort of lightweight woven fabric. I think it's a great use for that because it's such a simple shape to it. It really shows off a nice print. And I think the pattern says, say for my size, for an 140 centimetre wide fabric, you, it says you need about 1.5 metres of fabric, but I definitely squeeze my versions um, out of less fabric than that so I think the pattern envelope maybe is a little bit generous with how much fabric you do actually need it is a great little scrap buster a nice little simple tee but yeah that's what I'm wearing today but I'll move on now to showing what I've been up to over the last week or two on the sewing front and I'll start off with um, the garment I finished this week and this week I've been working on my second LED dress so this pattern here so it's the LED dress pattern by Closet Core Patterns. Closet Core describe it as a modern take on a classic wrap dress. And I tried it for the first time a little bit earlier this year. You may have seen my first version, which I made in a sort of um, a floral fabric with a black base. And it was quite a summery, um, flowy dress that I thought would be perfect for summer holidays. And I decided to revisit it because I happened to be in my local fabric shop a few weeks ago and it's actually more of a haberdashery and knitting shop actually and um, previously they've only really sold um, quilting cottons but I hadn't realised they branched out into other more dressmaking types of fabrics so I was in there and they had a special offer on so I picked up a fabric and when I picked it up I had in mind two dresses I thought I might like to make out of it and one was the LED dress the other was the Shelby dress by True Bias um, so I washed the fabric, popped it in my fabric stash for a week or two and had a little sort of mull over and I decided that the LED dress would be the best option for it and I really was looking forward to revisiting this pattern actually because I really enjoyed sewing it the first time so that is what I've done with that fabric but I'll show you the pattern first, it's such a pretty one. It's a really nice wrap dress pattern actually and historically I haven't been sure whether wrap dresses are really for me but I really feel comfortable wearing the LED wrap dress so here are the line drawings. You can make it, so it's a classic wrap dress, just secured with this tie around the waist. Um, the neckline is finished with a facing and it's got two different sleeve options. This sort of grown on shorter cap style sleeve or a longer, more sort of flowy sleeve, which looks lovely. I haven't tried that option yet. Both my options have been the shorter version, but I do think that would be so nice, that version, particularly for like a wedding where you've got a lovely sort of large floral fabric or something like that. I think that'll be so nice. And it's got three different lengths with kind of swishy skirt and like a knee length or midi length or a sort of maxi length version and you can add on patch pockets but i haven't done that on my versions because i've sewed with viscose for most of my versions and i never think a patch pocket works so well with a viscose i never think they hang so well um but yeah it's a great pattern it's got a really good size range too as ever with closet core patterns there's like a zero to 20 size range and also a 14 to 32 size range too and it's just a pattern that I found sewed up really nicely. Like I really enjoyed sewing my first version. I was quite keen to revisit. So I'll show you my second version I finished this week. So here it is. Um, so yeah, this is a viscose fabric I made in, I bought from my local fabric shop. It's a lovely um, fabric with this navy base and this pretty print on. I'm not sure what the print is really. It's not exactly a floral. It almost makes me think of feathers, but they're white with these little red dots on them. Um, and not totally ditzy, they have got kind of like a, there's kind of like a pattern to them. So when I was cutting, it was quite easy to see the lines to sort of line up the grain on them because it's, it's quite clear, the soft, it's almost geometric if you look at it, I look at it a lot. <laughs> so yeah, this is my LED dress. It's got the wrap around the middle. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, I've made the short sleeve version and I went for the midi length. So you can see the length here, but I'll put a picture in a moment. And the main change I've made with both of my versions and the pattern is the pattern has a facing around the neckline, but I've switched that for bias binding instead. Um, 
which is just a finish I prefer. I find particularly on a viscose fabric, I feel the bias binding, some, sorry, the facing sometimes can feel a little bit stiff. Maybe it's the um, interfacing I'm using. I just find the bias binding a bit more of a nicer finish. Um, so yeah, this is it. I did make a slight adjustment actually in terms of the fitting for my first version. So I think when I made this dress, I went for the size four and my measurements would put me as like a bust size two, waist size four and hip size six. So I went for a size four because when I was looking at the pattern pieces, I find it quite hard the way the pattern pieces are drafted to figure out how I could grade between the sizes from the bust to the waist. I think ideally I would have graded from a two at the bust to a four at the waist and because the waist looks quite fitted, how it sits and how the waistband is. So I wouldn't have wanted to a size down there, but I was a bit worried the bust would come out a bit too loose as a size four. And the bust on my first version where I went for the straight size four is okay but it's a little bit looser there and I have actually more recently added a little popper just to keep it together to make sure it does sit okay around the bust. But I thought with this version, I have a bit of an experiment of adjusting and without grading and just taking a bit of fabric out the front because I was finding the bit that where it was a little bit loose was just around this front bit here. So I thought if I could pinch a bit of fabric out of this front bit for my second version, it might sit a little bit more snugly there. So that is what I did. I had a go of adjusting the front pattern pieces. I basically just added a couple of almost like darts into the front pattern pieces, but not actually into the fabric. I then sort of just brought the pattern pieces in. I'm not sure if I've got the pattern piece here so I can show you actually how I adjusted. I'll try and find them a moment. So I found the pattern piece. I can show you what I did. It does look a little bit messy. Um, it was just kind of like a bit of a trial and error type thing that I had a go of. But so you can see here is the front bodice pattern piece. Here's the kind of curve at the front and what I did was I just basically cut in at three points of the front bodice and just took a bit of the volume out and just brought them together a little bit just so this piece ends up a little bit shorter along the front um, just to take that little bit of fabric out so it felt a little bit less loose there and a bit more close fitting to my body. So I guess if you did this yourself you then also need to adjust the facing if you're using a face the facing then the facing will be a longer length because I've taken a bit of length out here because I was using the bias binding, I didn't need to do that. I just um, bias bound the slightly shorter edge around the front. And actually it came out really well and I'm really happy with the fit on this second version. So I'm glad I did take a little bit of volume out of that front bit there. It has given it a more snug fit around the bust. I do quite like my first version because my first version feels very flowy and relaxed and it is a bit more, just generally the whole bodice feels a bit more looser and blousy than this version. So it has a slightly different feel to it, but. I think for this fabric particularly, which feels a bit more, I don't know what it is, it feels a bit less flowy and sort of um, romantic and summery. I wanted a bit of a different fit, so I'm glad I made that adjustment. Um, and I'll put a picture up in a moment so you can see how it does fit around the bust. I'm really happy with the fit. But it's such a lovely dress pattern. It has such pretty details. It's got these little um, sort of pleat bits at the front that you sew in. It's really hard to sew on this fabric. You can hopefully just about see there. You sew these sort of pleats in to give this extra, um, this lovely fit around the bust and also a little bit of flowiness there. At the back it's got some pleats too, hopefully you can just about see them here, which gives a bit of blousiness to the back. And it's just a really nice pattern to sew up that comes together really nicely. The only other change I made on my second version is, where's the pattern envelope? Um, oh here it is. So the midi version here is designed to sort of have the front edge of the skirt curve up a little bit at the front. I don't know why they've done it just in the midi because the um, knee length and the maxi length are just straight. I guess the max length it makes sense it's straight but I don't actually. Anyway. Just in the middle, they've got this um, sort of different sort of style of this coming up at the front version. And I went for the midi on my first version and left it like that with a slightly sort of, um, sort, of, sort of scooping up at the front at the bottom here. But for my second version for this fabric, I thought it'd suit it more just to have a straight fit across the bottom or straight cut across the bottom. So I actually leveled the hem out and made it totally straight. Um, just, I guess, just I thought it suited the fabric better. And also I thought it might be nice to have a bit of difference between the two versions. So I guess this one's ended up slightly shorter because I levelled it from the front all the way around. I could have actually altered the pattern pieces first to save me having to level it afterwards, but um, I didn't. So I did it the more tricky way. Um, instead of straightening the pattern pieces, I did it once I'd sewn up the dress. I did leave it to hang for a few days actually, and I did find the dress, did the, the fabric did drop a little bit. So between the seam lines, you could definitely see there was a slight drop where the fabric had loosened in the middle. So it did need levelling anyway, but I took a couple of inches off, um, or at least a couple of inches off around the whole thing, um, just to level it out totally straight. But 
yes that is my second LED dress it was really enjoyable to revisit this pattern and I'll put up a picture so you can see what it looks like on I'm really happy with it I love the pattern it's a bit different to other things I have in my wardrobe just because I don't have a lot of wrap dresses so I really enjoy getting these ones out although I haven't actually worn this one out of the house yet I need to yeah, just wear it out really because I did intend it to be a day dress rather than a dress for a special occasion so yeah I need to get it out and wear it out but yeah I'm really happy with how that turned out. So that's my LED dress that I've been working on over the last week or two and the next thing I wanted to talk about is some sewing plans but they're not actually firm plans they're more actually a couple of fabrics I've got in my stash that I don't quite know what to do with so I thought I'd share them on here and maybe um, if you guys had any ideas I would really appreciate it because they're fabrics I quite like to sew up, but yeah, I'm just not sure what to do with them, so I thought I'd share them here. I don't have a very big stash, and I haven't bought any fabric recently, actually, so I just thought it'd be nice to sort of try and clear down what I've got before I buy some more fabric. So we'll see how I get on with that, but these are two quite summery fabrics that I feel like if I don't sew with them now, they'll probably sit in my stash until next year, I guess, really, um, just because it'll be nice to sew them up now while the summer weather is still ahead before we start getting into autumn, which I'm sure will come around really quickly as ever. So the first fabric is a viscose fabric um, and I'll show you it. Um, it's this lovely, jo I think it's called Joni viscose fabric and it's a fabric godmother print. It's been a really popular one so you'll probably recognise it. Um, so it's a fabric godmother print, one of their vintage prints they've um, taken from the vintage print archive and put onto different fabric cloths. So I think this fabric, this, this print comes on a few different fabrics, um, but it's a lovely print and it comes in a few different colours too, I think, actually. I think there's a pink base and maybe a navy blue, which is really, really pretty too. But yeah, I've got this sort of creamy coloured viscose base fabric. So there's lovely floral print on these wide lines, so it has quite a lot of impact, this fabric. So the reason I have this fabric is a bit of a funny one, and I think I mentioned it a few weeks ago. I bought this fabric from Fabric Godmother originally to make this top here, which is the um, Tanita Top by Fibre Mood. It's a really cute um, woven top pattern for this cropped top that you just make sort of one front piece, pattern piece, one back pattern piece and bias binding. And then you finish it with elastic at the sort of cropped waist and also on the sleeve. So it ends up being quite like a billowy cropped um, cute little top. And I originally wanted to make this top because I saw a version that Lauren at Guthrie Garney had made using this fabric and I thought it was so lovely, I just wanted to have my own version. So I ordered the fabric from Fabric Godmother, it arrived, I washed it, I cut it out and then um, as I was in the process of cutting it, I was thinking this fabric is working so nicely and sitting so nicely for a viscose and it suddenly clocked um, to me that actually maybe they'd sent me the cotton lawn rather than the viscose because I knew there was a cotton lawn version. I'd obviously assumed that what I had was the viscose and then it suddenly clocked maybe this isn't actually the viscose at all. And when I rang up Fabric Godmother, or no, emailed, sorry, Fabric Godmother, to say I think you might have sent me the cotton lawn instead, they very kindly sent me the viscose and because the cotton lawn was already cut out and they said just keep it. Um, so I sewed up the Tanita top in cotton lawn, which I hadn't originally intended, in the lovely cotton lawn version of this fabric. I'll put a picture up of that top so you can see what it looks like. So I ended up being left with this fabric, um, I'm not sure what to do with it really. I don't really think I'm going to make another Tanita top because actually it worked okay in the cotton lawn. It maybe doesn't have the same drape as it would in the viscose but I like it so I'm not going to probably make another one in another um, base with the same sort of print on. But it does mean I've got 1.5 metres of this fabric and I'd love to turn it into something because it's such beautiful fabric. It seems a shame just to be sitting in my stash when I could turn it into something but... I think as my idea originally was a Tanita top, I'm a bit stuck with what to do with it now. So because I've got 1.5 metres, I guess I could turn it into a top of some sort, either like a sort of top with short sleeves or a blouse, or I might be able to squeeze out a dress um, if the dress doesn't have too many pieces and it's like a summery dress. I thought maybe one thing that might work is maybe making like an Ogden cami hack, like a sort of baby doll dress out of it. Um, but I wasn't sure it's such delicate fabric. I wasn't sure that it might be better as a top. It might not be so hard wearing for a dress. I just wasn't sure. So yeah, I really don't know what to do with it. So I would love ideas if you have any ideas. Um, I just want something that would showcase the print. Um, so I guess something that's fairly simple. But I'm really stuck, but I love it. So I'd love to be able to sew up. So if you do have any ideas, then please do let me know for this one. 
Then the second fabric that I've had in my stash since last summer, I think I was intending to start up last summer and I kept being really indecisive about what to do with it. Um, it's quite a different fabric, it's this one here. This is a lightweight linen fabric. This came from Ditto Fabrics. Um, I'll link their website down below. They often have some quite nice, interesting and different type fabrics on there. You never know what you're gonna get, I think, when you go on their website and have a look at their new arrivals. But yeah, I saw this lightweight linen fabric and I thought it was really sweet. I hadn't sewed with like a lightweight linen before, so I thought it'd be perfect for summer because it'd be nice and breathable and lightweight. Um, and I thought the stripe was quite cool and it might be cool to sort of play with the stripe um, in some way, like the, in terms of the direction of it. Um, it's 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 fairly it's fairly opaque. I think it'll be fine for a dress without needing to line it. Probably um, it's not too sheer, even though it's quite lightweight. And I got two point five meters of this fabric, and my initial thoughts were maybe to make like a top and short set or a top and skirt set or something that I could wear two items as separates or wear them together. Um, I guess maybe I had in mind something a bit like the recent. SD pattern by Tilling the Buttons with like a little sort of vest top and some sort of sort of shorts um, although that pattern wasn't out when this fabric came out but something along those lines like a matching sort of co-ord set um, but I just was never sure really and then I started thinking maybe it better as a dress like um, if I got a dress where I could play with the stripe direction like say the Forsyth dress by French Navy um, has a lovely sort of panelled bodice where you can play with the stripes going different ways although I have got a version of that in a stripy fabric so probably not that pattern because it'll be too similar um see so yeah, i'm really not sure so with 2.5 meters i have a bit of flexibility on this one but i just don't know what to make with it i have a feeling if i made it into like trousers it might feel a bit too pajamary and i wasn't sure even if a cord set might feel too pajamary so um i would rather make it not as pajamas because i don't think i probably wear it as pajamas i prefer kind of like a jersey top in bed um so yeah, something for the day, um, something summary. I really don't know what. So if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, part of me thinks maybe I should just dash dash this fabric because I really am struggling for inspiration on it. So I think if I can't think of anything this summer to turn it into, I might consider de dashing it instead. Um, but yeah, it would be lovely to sew it up. I haven't haven't sewn with lightweight linen. I think it'd be really nice to wear too. So. If I could find something to sew up into that would be summary, that would be lovely. So if you do have any ideas, then please do let me know, I'd really appreciate it. So those are two fabrics that I could really do with some inspiration for. And it would be really great if I could sew them up sooner rather than later, particularly ahead of the summer holidays and going on holiday, because I think they're both fabrics were really lovely ones to take on a summer holiday with me. I think they could make really lovely summery garments that would be really enjoyable to wear if I could find the perfect pattern match for each of them. So fingers crossed, um, but yeah, any ideas for patterns would be very, very gratefully received. So yeah, that's those fabrics. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about is my crochet project that I finished this week. So it's been a nice week of finishing things this week with my LED wrap dress and this crochet project. Although this crochet project has definitely been a bit more of a longer term one that I've been working on it for a while. And I think I've shared a little bit of my progress I've been making on it in previous catch up videos, but it's nice to have it finished. And it is the first time I've tried to crochet a garment. Um, so I started crocheting, or it probably started to click, I think just right towards the end of last year. And so this year I've been really enjoying sort of trying out different stitches and practicing crochet. And I've made a little granny square blanket for my daughter to use with her sort of teddies and toys when she's playing with it, it was just a small one. And then I made a crochet bag using a free We Are Knitters pattern. And then having made those things, I thought it might be fun to give a garment a go and just see how I got on and sort of throw myself in the deep end a little bit. So I got this pattern here to give a go. It's a, the vest number 23 by Daisy and Peace. I saw it go by on Instagram and thought it looked quite simple because it's just sort of a front and a back, no sleeves and then a bit of ribbing. Um, so I thought, yeah, it might be a nice one I could start with. Um, and I just thought it was quite a cute design, quite simple but effective with this sort of wiggly stripe on it. I thought it looked quite nice in two sort of contrasting colours and it might make quite a nice sort of winter layering piece. So yeah, I got this pattern. I thought I'd just give it a try and see how I got on. And I actually really enjoyed giving it a go. It was quite daunting when I got the instructions at first and saw the sort of pictures inside, but I just sort of took it slowly, broke it down, practiced some of the stitches on some sort of a wool I had just in my stash 
um, before I started on the pop wall of the project, got a bit confident and then just went for it. And yeah, I've really enjoyed working on it. And here is my finished crochet vest. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out actually. And it was a fun make. Um, so yeah, you, as you can see, I've gone for yarn in this bright sort of lipstick red colour and this pretty pink colour. I thought they'd be quite cool contrasting colours together. And the actual yarn itself is Debbie Bliss Rialto DK Merino Superwash Wool. Um, it's quite a lengthy title. I got it from Love Crafts. I'll link it down below. They had quite a lot of nice colours to choose from. And I thought um, I wanted something that like a merino wool because I think this will be sort of, I'll be able to feel it on my skin, maybe around my neck and things. So, and I find that sort of some yarns can itch me, but I'm okay with merino yarn. And it wasn't, it wasn't too expensive actually. I thought it was quite good value. Um, but yeah. So this is my finished vest, um, which I really enjoyed stitching up. I found the whole process quite interesting. I wasn't exactly expecting how expecting how it would come together. So you start off by crocheting the rib at the bottom, and I thought it was quite interesting. With knitting, you kind of make rib like by going across like this. But with crochet, you go up and down along it, so that was a bit different. Then you crochet that up the front and the back, and then for the ribbing, that was the bit I was surprised about. I'm used to sort of finishing off like necklines with um, with knitting by sort of picking up um, around the neckline and then sort of ribbing adding ribbing to that but with this um, garment instead you make the ribbing separately so you just make a long piece of ribbing like a long zigzag 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 back and forth and then you attach it onto the garment and sew it on so one tricky thing was making sure you got the right length because you didn't want it to be too short and end up too tight or too long and end up sort of too loose so I found that a little bit tricky and um, it took a bit of trial and error to get the right length on the ribbing um, and then you sew it on um, which is a bit more straightforward at that point. But um, but yeah, it was interesting actually to see how it came together. I did make a few changes to this vest from the pattern. The first thing was that I used a four millimetre crochet hook throughout, although the pattern would have you do the ribbing in four millimetres and then move on to a five millimetre hook for sort of the main body. But I found when I did that at the start, although I'd done a tension swatch and it came out okay, when I started the actual garment, it just started to look like it was going to be really large. So... I just kept it as a four millimetre all the way up. I knit, I did the ribbing fairly tightly and I, knit, I sort of crocheted a bit more loosely for the actual garment um, and that came out close to the measurements per the pattern. I think I am on the tight side when it comes to knitting and crochet anyway so that might be part of the reason why I had to sort of size down the hook. I also then added a bit of length to the um, vest. I think I had a bit of length here and also here just because it did look like it was going to come quite short and a bit high on the armholes and things so it was quite easy just to add a couple more lines, obviously, of this pattern. And then the one other thing I did was I just dipped the neckline down slightly at the front. Because um, when I made it up the first time and I sort of pinned it together and tried it on, it just felt like it was coming up a bit high. And that was about the ribbing. So I thought once I had the ribbing on, it might be a really bit too high. So I basically just took it down one row, just this front bit here. So a few little tweaks to the pattern. Um... But yeah, it was a really fun make and I'm really happy with how it turned out and it's quite nice and cosy. So I think it'll be a really nice layering piece for winter. And I've got a picture, so I'll pop it up. Um, I took this picture on quite a hot day, so I didn't layer up. That would have been far too hot. So I'm just wearing it as a vest on its own. And I actually quite like it as a vest on its own too. I think it's quite cute just um, with a pair of jeans on its own as well. So that wasn't something I was expecting. I thought it would just be a layering piece, but yeah. I had, it was having been too hot on that day. It was actually a happy... Um, accident that meant I could try it on and think actually it's quite nice just the vest on its own as well as a layering piece so yeah I love the colours I think it was quite um quite they're quite fun um and yeah it was really nice to try my first um garment crochet project and it does make me think I'd like to try more in the future I haven't um got any in mind at the moment I'm gonna have to go off and have a little look at some patterns and figure out what I might like to make first um I remember ages ago I bought a pattern by accident actually, a crochet pattern, thinking it was a knitting pattern. It was a cardigan pattern by All About Amy. I love everything that All About Amy does, all of her knitting and crochet patterns. So I might go and have a look, I've got it downloaded on my computer still, I might go and have a look at that pattern and see if that looks like something I might want to tackle now. It was for longer cardigans, so it'll be a bit more of an involved make, um, so it depends whether I want to tackle such a large project. But that is an option of a crochet pattern I already have just by accident. Um, so yeah, maybe that, but I'm going to have a think about it. I would like to have another project because I do like having something to keep me busy on the sofa in the evening. So, um, but yeah, this has been a really nice one to give a go and I'm glad it turned out to be a success because although I went into it thinking it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out, it's always nice when things do work out, isn't it? And it has increased my confidence 
um, for trying some different things with crochet. So yeah, that is the vest number 23 crochet pattern. I'll link it down below and I'll link the yarn down below too. So that is everything that I've got to share in today's video. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what I've been up to on the sewing front and the crochet front too. And like I mentioned earlier, any ideas for those two fabrics we very gratefully received. So thank you in advance. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, then please do press the subscribe button and also click on the bell icon too, which means you'll be notified when I bring out future videos. So thank you again for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll hopefully see you for another video again soon. In the meantime, I'll say bye. Bye.